you know, Big Ten, we, we know, is a war and it's a battle. And, um, you know, to see all of our league do so well in the non-conference and we went the number one RPI ranked conference in the country, says we got some pretty talented teams. It's always been a dream of mine. Uh, I used to watch the games when I was little. I came to the uh, basketball camps when I was younger. And I think just, you know, being the camper, now being the coach at the camps and stuff like that, it's unreal. Um, you know, it's a dream come true. It's something that I always dreamed of, but never really thought um, I'd actually be here someday. And now it being my last year, it flew by, uh, and I have, to, I have nothing to regret coming here. told me in high school she wanted to go to medical school and I'll be honest I wasn't really sure that that was going to happen and not because I didn't think she was capable I just didn't you know a lot of kids say things and they and they mean it but they don't really understand it totally um, and so I thought if she got into college that she would change her mind and not sure which direction she would go in but I thought she would change her mind for medical school and do something else and so as each year she, get, she kept taking the classes and talking about it I started realizing that she really was serious about this and she really was going to make the push for it and and as a parent, you worry, can she make it, you know, can she do with basketball, and you know, should she quit basketball to do the academics only so she can reach her goal, but she wanted to do both, and, and I give her credit for being able to handle both. The reason I chose to go pre-med was I truly enjoy helping people. I know that's kind of the political answer that everyone gives and why they want to be a doctor, but I just can't see myself doing anything else. Um, I've been around medicine because my mom, since I was little, going into the training room with her, um, on weekends and stuff like that, and I just am intrigued by everything the body does. She's always loved children, and in fact her choices when she was looking at colleges was I want to be a pediatrician or a teacher. You know, she wasn't sure she, you know, she wanted to be around children at some point. She loves trying to teach them, she loves working with them. Um, so that's, I don't, you know, that's just was in her from day one. She loved to, you know, play with younger children and take care of them and all that, so it's been in her, in her nurturing side from the, from the beginning. And so she's a very loving, caring child. And I'm proud of what she's become. Well, I love Tracy. I adore her, and I think she's been such a valuable part of our programs. And her value is, you know, it doesn't show up on a stat sheet, but let me tell you, it means a lot to our team. She is fun, outgoing, engaging. She, um, you know, is very focused on the game plan and helping coach her teammates. She brings a lot of energy. I don't think there's a better ambassador. Uh, to Michigan State, and I don't know if there's a better MSU women's basketball ambassador than Tracy Noble. Just getting to shadow with our team doctor, Dr. Lemon, Dr. Covan. I'm going to get to watch surgery with Dr. Shingles soon. Um, it really does, I mean, I think it also seals the deal that I want to be a doctor. Everything they do is interesting to me. There's never a dull day, and um, they have been so great giving me time and hours that I can go in and shadow with them. Medical school is going to be very demanding. But she's already been through some of that in terms of the demands, that she has constant demands on her. You don't have a whole lot of free time, a lot of social time. And so um, the fact that she's been that free up before, I think, is huge. The fact she's been through stress before, you know, I think when the doctors or things are happening and stressing, I think, you know, she's been through that in the basketball court. There's people getting stressed and things happening, and you learn to stay calm. And I think it's going to help her in the future as a doctor. When I found out that I got into medical school, uh, I called my dad, and he said, I'm coming to pick you up for lunch right now. Uh, we went out to lunch. So, I mean, I just have such a supporting and loving family. My grandparents are in California, but I call them every night. And just talking to them, um, have, like hearing how proud they are of me, um, it's truly a blessing. And my brother now works at the Smith Center. Um, it's just really great having a close family and everyone being around. To go into medical school with the commitment that she had and the energy and the focus that she gave this program, it just needed to be celebrated. And so um, I had a little staff meeting and talked about um, we really wanted to do a surprise party for her. And she had no idea what was coming, obviously, and we wanted it that way. But 
she's just been such a valuable part of our program and it's a big deal she got into med school it should be celebrated and I know she probably did that with her family but you know we're, we're her Spartan family too and we wanted to make sure she knew how proud we are of her and her accomplishment. You know, Penn State is a great team, obviously, with tremendous players, and they have some depth and some size, and, you know, given our situation, we knew it was going to be a battle with the limitations that we had in terms of our numbers, and um, the fact we beat them twice last year, I think there was no question they had a little different approach to Michigan State. They only lost three games in the league, and two of them were to us, so we knew they'd have a little bit of a, you know, an axe to grind, as they say. Um, our problem was we just were very flat when it didn't go our way and normally we you know kind of roll up our sleeves and go to work but we really didn't that game so that was what I didn't like to see and we're really focused on getting back to being aggressive and you know the game just doesn't come to you you just don't win you have to go take it you have to go earn it and uh, you know we got back a little bit more to who we are and what we had been you know it's not fun to not play well and then have to sit around for a week but we did get some work done in that week and felt like we focused on ourselves which was important. We work really hard as a staff in the recruiting process to make sure that the kids we bring in here understand that academics comes first and want that for themselves. As the academic coordinator, kind of make sure that the students are in the right courses that they need to be uh, with the eligibility requirements. You know, really help with the transition from being a a high school student to a freshman and then either when they're here to life after college, life after basketball. We also have the Smith Center which has computers. We get printing, um, small rooms to study in, and there's a lecture hall that you can go in where it's quiet. And they're open a lot until midnight and even on the weekends. So there's really no excuse we can say that we don't have a place to study. But they offer a lot of things for us to use and they keep every single one of us on track. When they walk in there, I feel like the people in that building, they really work on their development as a holistic approach from community service to accountability to life lessons to resources with tutors and mentors and whatever resources that they have they use to their best of their ability and they really do a great job of reaching each and every student athlete. The women's basketball team after this fall semester had their highest GPA, uh, cumulative GPA that they've ever had as a program dating back probably the last 15 years. This points out the kind of academic preparation and time that all the girls put in. I think you see a correlation between how they do on the court and then how they do in the classroom. If you look at actually the first part of the season they had, they're off to their best start in ever or in years and I think that kind of rubs off on the classroom and the classroom rubs off on the court. Well, Illinois had been playing very well, and um, they had beaten Georgia at home, obviously turned around and followed that up with some, some key victories, beating Ohio State and you know, really taking Northwestern at Northwestern. So we knew they had been playing well, their confidence was high, and we had this week to prepare and wasn't sure what team was going to show up, but felt for, I felt good about the fact that we had accomplished some things and felt like we were ready to go. So. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I knew our fight was there that day, and I could tell from the opening tip that we were ready to play. Nothing in off the window, the way. Bounce pass down low, Schiffauer all over the right block, fakes it up and in. Johnson to Schiffauer, lobbed underneath, Hine goes up with a right hand and lays it in. Spartans win 
75. They go on the road to pick up their first road victory of the season. A fine performance from the Spartans who break out of their offensive slump in a big way. That's Tracy. <laughs> It's Tracy. <laughs> Tracy, you see the stethoscope on her neck? Because she's going to be a doctor. You be a doctor? Yeah, Tracy. Can you say Dr. Tracy? Dr. Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> happy medical school. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be happy the whole time. <laughs> medical school, nonetheless.